In the Permian-Triassic extinction, known as the Great Dying, which occurred 251 million years ago, approximately 80 to 90 percent of the world's biodiversity was wiped out. However, there were species that somehow managed to survive this extinction, and these species rose to a position where they dominated the world. They then evolved into giant land creatures, apex predators, flying life forms the size of fighter jets, and incredible marine creatures. Some of these creatures evolved in such a strange way that they looked like they had come out of a fantasy book. In fact, some of them seemed to exist solely to mess with our brains. For example, some had very strange skulls, while others had strange protrusions on their backs that were at least as long as they were. Again, some had necks that were 4 meters or 13 feet long, while others had sharp claws on their tails. There were other creatures living alongside these strange and predatory creatures, but diversifying in their shadows. These creatures, who would play key roles in the future of our planet, were none other than mammals and plants. In this video, we examine the creatures that survived the Permian-Triassic extinction and witness how these creatures diversified and took over the world and how they were threatened by yet another extinction event. There were two groups of animals that dominated the land during the Permian period. These were the synapsids, the ancestors of mammals, and the sauropsids, the ancestors of reptiles. During the Permian period, the synapsids had a great dominance over the sauropsids, and they controlled the vast majority of the land habitats. However, around 251 million years ago, things started to change, and approximately 90% of the world's biodiversity disappeared in the mass extinction that occurred. We don't know exactly what caused this event, but we think that one of the biggest culprits was the region known today as the Siberian. Traps. This giant magmatic event may have caused global warming by releasing tons of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, as well as blocking sunlight and acidifying the oceans. During this extinction event called the Great Dying, approximately 70% of the species that were on land and disappeared were synapsid species. The disappearance of a large portion of these creatures changed the world forever, and it prepared the ground for the beginning of the Age of Reptiles. The beginning of the Age of Reptiles is considered to be the Triassic period, which began immediately after after the Great Extinction. However, at the beginning of the Triassic period, the world was dominated not by reptiles, but by a species of synapsid, Lystrosaurus. Surviving the greatest mass extinction the world had ever seen, and suddenly finding themselves in the middle of vast lands that needed to be discovered, the Lystrosaurus slowly began to spread across the Earth. And it did not take long for them to spread to a part of the world. Because at that time, all the continents were in the final stages of merging to form a single supercontinent called Pangaea. This is how Lystrosaurus became the most common vertebrate on land, making up about 95% of the species there. What allowed them to spread and reproduce so easily around the world was their lifestyle and abilities. The fossils we found show that these creatures' front legs were even stronger than their hind legs and that they nested underground. In addition, the fossils we found indicate that Lystrosaurus were very good travelers and were constantly on the move. This constant movement and habit of nesting underground may have allowed them to protect themselves from the ash and toxic gases coming from the magmatic region in the Siberian traps. However, the fact that these creatures traveled constantly has also helped change the way we understand the world, and the Lystrosaurus fossils we found have provided some of the most convincing evidence for plate tectonics because their fossils have been found in various parts of the world, including Africa, China, and Antarctica. In short, these creatures are one of the greatest proofs of the existence of the Pangaea supercontinent. However, the world domination of Lystrosaurus did not last long because the characteristics of this new world were perfect for the existence of reptiles. Although the land masses were taken over by primitive mammals such as Lystrosaurus at the beginning of the Triassic period, this situation was reversed in just 10 million years, and a special group of sauropsids, the archosaurs, slowly began to occupy the living spaces of the world. Archosaurs are a group of reptiles that include many animals such as dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and crocodile-like creatures such as phytosaurs. The first known archosaurs began to appear about 250 million years ago. It is believed that they then diversified tremendously and took over the world. What allowed them to take over the world was that there were no species that could compete with these creatures and that they adapted very well to this environment after the extinction. For example, while the low oxygen air in the atmosphere after the Great Dying made it difficult for other creatures to breathe, it was not a problem for archosaurs, because they had air sacs that allowed them to breathe much more efficiently, and thanks to these sacs, they could breathe oxygen both while inhaling and exhaling. This feature, which is also found in modern birds, allows birds to flap their wings for hours without running out of breath. In fact, birds are actually members of the archosaurs. These and many similar features, and the fact that predatory synapsids such as gorgonops were wiped out in the Great Dying, allowed archosaurs to spread much more easily in this environment without competition. This spread is also known as adaptive 
adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation is when living things rapidly evolve from the same ancestor to different species and fill ecological gaps after a change in the environment. For example, we can show Darwin's finches found on the Galapagos Islands as a good example of adaptive radiation. The finches found here are descended from an ancestor that migrated from the South American continent to the Galapagos Islands. As a result, many new species have evolved from that ancestor over the generations, differentiated and adapted to occupy the habitats on the island. These finches have even developed different types of beaks according to their feeding habits. For example, some of these birds eat insects, while others eat seeds, and some suck blood. Here, during the Triassic period, creatures in the archosaur group began to evolve into many species by exhibiting adaptive radiation. In fact, these creatures diversified so much that many species with strange features and appearances emerged during this period. About 243 million years ago, dinosaurs, the most magnificent members of the archosaurs, slowly began to roam the Earth. One of the first dinosaurs to roam the Earth was this species called Nyasasaurus. These dinosaurs, which lived in the region we know today as Tanzania and could reach a length of about 3 meters or 10 feet, probably adopted an omnivorous diet and ate any food they could find. Another type of dinosaur that emerged at that time was the Euroraptor. These creatures, which lived in the region we know today as Argentina, were also about 1 meter or 3 feet long and weighed about 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. What made them so light was that their bones were hollow. The fossils we found along with these show that these creatures walked on two legs and had five fingers on their forearms. However, only three of their fingers had claws and the other two fingers were quite short. These probably omnivorous creatures may have been hunted by a primitive dinosaur called Herrerasaurus, because Herrerasaurus lived in the region we know today as Argentina and became apex predators in the regions they lived in. These primitive dinosaurs, which could reach a length of about 5 to 6 meters, seem to have evolved only for biting and eating. They had large, serrated teeth in their mouths and their necks were quite flexible. However, primitive dinosaurs began to differentiate over the generations and split into two different groups about 230 million years ago. These were the long-necked sauropods and the bipedal theropods, which mostly ate meat. But of course, the diversification was not limited to these two groups. Another lineage of archosaurs was trying to adapt to another environment. That was the sky. These reptiles that invaded the sky were called pterosaurs, and millions of years later, some of them had wingspans of more than 10 meters or 33 feet. Along with these, some reptiles also began to invade the seas. For example, ichthyosaurs had been swimming in the world's oceans since the beginning of the Triassic period, and shortly after, plesiosaurs began swimming in the oceans with them. Thus, all control of the land, sea, and sky passed to the reptiles and they ruled the Pangaea supercontinent very comfortably. During this period of diversification and spread of reptiles around the world, such strange-looking creatures emerged that some of them seemed to exist only to confuse us. For example, one of these was this strange reptile called Atopodentitis. This creature, which perhaps had the strangest head structure on Earth, caused debate among scientists for many years. Because when the fossils of Atopodentitis were first found, it was thought that there was a slit in its upper jaw and that there were teeth on both sides of the slit and that these teeth met like a zipper. It was thought that this was the case when Atopodentatus had a strange smile on its face. However, fossils found later showed that this creature's jaw was actually flat and had a hammer-like structure. These creatures, which were about 3 meters or 10 feet in size, filtered small creatures with their small needle-like teeth and fed in this way. Some researchers think that they used their front teeth to scrape algae from the seafloor. Another creature that was at least as strange as Atopodentitis was Tanistropheus. When the fossils of Tanistropheus were first found, it was thought that it was a flying reptile. However, in 3D reconstructions that were made later, it was discovered that these reptiles had many features necessary for living in water. For example, their nostrils were located on the upper part of the jaw, like the nostrils of today's crocodiles. In addition, their long and curved teeth were suitable for catching slippery creatures such as fish and squid. The fossils we found show that these creatures could reach a length of approximately 6 meters or 20 feet. A large part of this length is made up of the neck and tail. In fact, their necks alone could reach a length of 3 meters or 10 feet. In addition, when we examine their limbs, we see that they were not good swimmers at all. These creatures probably moved slowly in murky waters and hunted by hiding. Some estimates say that they waited on the shore and used their long necks to hunt creatures in the water. Another creature that lived in the Triassic waters was Temnodontosaurus, a species of ichthyosaur. According to the fossils we found, these creatures could reach a length of 12 meters or 40 feet. It also shows that they had huge jaws and razor-sharp teeth, which allowed them to easily eat hard-shelled ammonites. In fact, according to some evidence, they may have hunted other ichthyosaurs. With their huge eyes that reached 20 centimeters or 8 inches, these creatures could easily see and hunt other creatures in deep water.
Like most large ichthyosaurs, Temnodonosaurus is thought to have lived in deep water and surfaced to breathe fresh air. Of course, not all the strange-looking creatures that lived in the Triassic lived in water. For example, Drapanosaurus was one of the strangest land creatures ever seen. This creature, which could reach a length of about 45 centimeters or 18 inches, had a strange hook-like claw on its tail. It also had claws on its front feet that resembled the claws on its tail. That's why scientists think these creatures moved on trees and used their claws for this purpose. Of course, that wasn't the only function of the claws. Drapanosaurus probably also used their claws to lift tree bark and reach small invertebrates like worms. Another strange creature that lived on land was Longusquama. Longusquama is one of the most mysterious reptiles in the fossil record because the remains found showed a series of hockey stick-like protrusions on the backs of these creatures. For this reason, it was initially thought that they were a transitional species between birds and reptiles and that these protrusions were actually used for gliding. After some time, it was thought that these protrusions were actually fossilized plant remains with them. However, a study conducted in 2012 discovered that these strange protrusions were not actually plant remains, but were made of skin and had a connection to the spine of the animal's body. Today, it is estimated that these protrusions were scaly protrusions connected to Longusquama. Creatures that lived during the Triassic period struggled to survive during another extinction event that occurred approximately 201 million years ago. And in this extinction event, approximately 76% of all marine and land species became extinct. Although the Triassic extinction was not as devastating as the Great Dying, it caused serious declines in some species. It particularly affected marine life, causing the extinction of conodonts. It also destroyed most of the ammonites and some coral species. On land, it caused the extinction of living species such as Aetosaurs, Phytosaurs, and Rauisuchidae, which were abundant here. The extinction of these creatures and the emptying of the habitats they controlled allowed creatures such as dinosaurs and pterosaurs to multiply in these areas and new species to emerge. This extinction in the Triassic period led to dinosaurs becoming the dominant animals on Earth, and it allowed them to rule the planet for 135 million years. We do not know exactly what caused these mass extinctions at the end of the Triassic period. However, we think that this extinction may have occurred due to the disintegration of the Pangaea continent, because at the end of the Triassic period, the supercontinent Pangaea, which united all all the continents into a single landmass began to disintegrate. When North America separated from Africa and the Atlantic Ocean began to form, large-scale volcanic activity occurred. This would have caused a huge amount of lava to erupt onto the Earth's surface, which would have released a huge amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, causing global warming and ocean acidification, which could have caused mass extinctions. I would be glad if you could share your thoughts about the video in the comments. Goodbye.